Hi everyone. So I'm in uh, Lusning, middle of Denmark, basically, <laughs> to simplify. Um, and uh, really excited. This is the first time I'm getting to see such a facility behind us. Um, and it's a, it's a CO2 heat pump for district heating. Okay. And Klaus is going to tell us a little bit about what, what's actually in there and why, why this is such an opportunity for natural refrigerants. Um, and you know, uh, this is megawatts here again. How, how many megawatts is this particular unit, this particular facility? It's uh, seven megawatts. Seven megawatts. Air to water heat Air pump. Air to water heat pump, okay, seven megawatts. That's, you know, just like a couple of years ago, we wouldn't have thought of that even being possible for CO2, right? No. Right. So things are moving very, very fast in this space. All right. So now we we got the, obviously this lovely facility behind us, but you know, just literally less than a year ago, this is what it looked like. Greenfield, right? It was brand new. It was countryside. Um, and now, in the space of nine months, you've yeah. put this facility out, right? You've you've installed this. Yes. Um, and you connected it to the district heating grid, and the piping is literally. Below us, right? In the ground, yes. In the ground. The network was already there. Okay. So it is a existing uh, district heating network like in any other uh, mid-sized city in, uh, in Denmark. And what you have in the background here, yes, it was a greenfield and you can, sort of, the big thing in the, in the yeah. background is a silo. You call it's that the a, battery, right? We call it the energy storage. The energy storage. Yes. But, but it's it basically is, water. It's basically a water battery. Water and battery. And what, what we do is that we have in the building here, we have the heat pumps, okay. the machinery. Yep. And then over here, yep. we have the energy collectors, okay. which is a big part of the air to water heat pump. This is where you, uh, you absorb, you, you collect energy from air, yep. and then you basically deliver or reject all that heat into the district heating network. Okay. So by the gas cooler on the CO2 system, you heat up water from the district heating uh, network. How many homes are going to be heated with this? Oh, I should have known that. It's yeah. uh, a lot. <laughs> I mean, lot, it's that town it's right behind us, right? It's, it's this town, town over there you can that. see in the background it's there. It's a seven megawatt heat pump, yeah. and it's uh, delivering part of the heat for that city. So okay. the city still have other sources to run at, sure. but what it does is that it will replace fossil, uh, it will replace a biomass. So instead of running on biomass to burn things to, uh, to, to, to do heating, now we use uh, renewable electricity, put it into the heat pump, and heat up uh, the city with that. And that's the opportunity of actually having that's heat pumps, the right? That's why the the district heating, the utilities that run these uh, 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 grids, are interested in bringing heat pumps into their mixture of technologies, yes. right? Especially, especially in Denmark, because we have, or in all over, but in Denmark we are very good with uh, renewable electricity. We have a lot of wind yeah. turbines. Yeah. We had a lot of uh, a lot of solar energy. Yeah. And here the combination with heat pumps of course with natural refrigerant yep. and the energy storage there yeah. and the district heating network which is already established in many cities it's just a brilliant combination it's a plug and play plug and play big size big size <laughs> and the battery storage there really help us because that makes the heat pump you only have to run it when the electricity prices are low so that's where you're allowed to really manage the the energy and and and, and optimize on the pricing side right exactly yeah, because of the storage ability. The storage there means that we basically decouple the city's yeah. heating demand from when electricity prices are low. Okay. So we have a lot of fluctuation in electricity prices, which, which is, you have it because... So you're uh, able to provide heating for a lot cheaper, basically. Yes. Right, and there's an obligation here in Denmark for that, right? The, yeah. the owners of the, 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 the district heating grids, they, they have to have, kind of keep the prices low for the citizens, right? Yes, of course. Yeah, so this yeah. is a great way for them to do that. Really good. And, and CO2 is a great solution, right, from a natural refrigerant perspective to do such a, an installation, right? And you see a lot of this coming in the next few years for you? Yeah, we see a lot of projects like this in the pipeline. Um, one project that we will soon deliver is a 13 megawatt heat pump. One three. Run three. So it's almost double sized than the heat pump that we see here today. And it's, everyone is doing it in district heating. And uh, CO2 is just a very nice refrigerant for exactly these uh, projects. It's very efficient to uh, use CO2 directly in the evaporator, so you can collect energy from air. Yep. Very efficient. That's one thing CO2 is really good at. 
and then it's very good with exactly those temperatures that we have in the district heating network. So it does depend on the network? It does depend on the network. Okay. So if you want to heat up water from 35, 40 degrees to 70, 75 degrees, CO2 is just perfect. It's okay. the only choice. All right, okay. Some, in the, some might dispute the only choice there, so be careful on that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, uh, it's definitely a, a fast and upcoming one, right? And obviously, Fenergy is really pushing the, the CO2 angle on that one. Yeah. And, and doing a very good job on that, so congrats. So now we're going to go and see a little bit what's inside, right? Yeah, let's do it. So what are we seeing right now? What we're looking at here is the energy collectors, as we tend to call them for okay. air-to-water heat pumps. Okay. But it's an evaporator. All right. Uh, it's a Gündner evaporator okay. that we are using. It's our standard. It's uh, our own Finity design. Okay. Uh, we have 18 okay. uh, evaporators here, all, all right. identical. Okay. So uh, what you're seeing here is the CO2 piping. It's uh, expansion valves and it's uh, um, piping for refrigerant. And this is key, right? This is key. This is really where you uh, collect the energy. So this is where you evaporate the refrigerant and uh, absorbing energy from from the air yeah all right so tell us what's inside here how many racks uh, there's three identical uh, racks okay. three heat pumps each of them is around 2.3 uh, megawatt okay. heating okay. capacity yes lots of uh which kind of compressors heat we, exchangers we, uh, we're using a pizza compressors in okay. this case eight okay. cylinder pizza compressors okay and we are using uh, the large uh, Kelvian uh, heat exchangers, okay, uh, gas and coolers. And I guess you've got quite a few of your ejectors in there as well? Yes, of course. Okay. It's mandatory for a CO2 heat pump. Uh, we would state that, uh, that you have the ejector to uh, raise the efficiency of the heat pump. Okay, and then and Siemens also you're using? Siemens uh, PLC okay. is inside the panel. Uh, and uh, That's so a key part of your... It's, what, it's, it's the key part because yeah. it's controlling the evaporators that you see in, yeah. in the background. Yeah. It's controlling uh, defrosting. It's controlling, of course, the rack and the compressors mm -hmm. itself. But it's a uh, it's a system that you have on top controlling the complete thing. Okay. So, uh, this energy battery, this big tank. What is what is? Just tell us a little bit how it works and how the water inside, how that fluctuates on a daily basis or depending on the energy prices. Uh, just tell us a little bit more. Well, the storage is uh, used to, um, to decouple the city's uh, heating demand. Yeah. We always, I mean, the, the first priority for the, for the district heating plant is to deliver hot water heating to the city. You, they always have to prioritize that. But then secondly, they want to consume electricity when the electricity prices are low. Uh, the electricity prices are typically low when we have a lot of wind and yeah. a lot of solar. And we have a lot of that, and there's still being done a lot of investment in renewable electricity sure. in Denmark. So they need to use that electricity. Yeah, and so so the basically so the cheaper the electricity, the more you fill up this tank, right? Exactly. When the price on electricity are low, then we fill up the tank. Okay. Even that there is no heat uh, demand for the yeah. city, then yeah. we fill up the tank. Of course, when it's filled, then it's yeah. then it's full. Then we stop the heat pump. All right. But uh, then later on, there will be a, a demand for heating in the yeah. city, and then maybe the electricity prices are high, so then yeah. the heat pump is stopped. Okay. So that's how they uh, that use simple? it. It's, it's very simple. It's yeah. just a balance. Yeah, balancing act. Yeah. And optimizing that on the price point. Yes. Okay. So I'm guessing that, you know, this up and down, this ebb and flow of pricing and filling up the tank, that's quite a kind of like on and off type operation. It is, yes. Yeah, it is. One, one, one of the benefits about our heat pumps is that we can start and stop them very fast. Okay. So uh, in order to really to utilize this uh, fluctuating electrical market, you need a heat pump that can start and stop fast. So it could be that you have just a three hours, four hours period during a day where, where the electrical prices are very low. And then we start up the heat pump in five minutes, it's up running full speed. And then we uh, um, use uh, the storage to, uh, to provide all the heat into the storage. Okay. And then after uh, three hours, four hours, we stop the heat pump again and then continues one hour after and ups and downs. And this could be on a daily operation. This could be every day you could do it this. It could be every day, yeah. or every week, depending okay. on the prices. All right. Okay.